Alright, so this is going to be a little rundown of a film camera, how it works, kind of what the little different buttons and switches are, how to load it, and how to shoot with it. So this is a Canon FTB. Um, it's a pretty classic example of a fairly manual film camera in the way that it has an electronic meter, but other functions are all mechanical, like the timer for the shutter speeds and stuff like that. All right, so on the Canon FTB, uh, you have the lens mounted in the front like regular cameras, and this is a 50 millimeter 1.8, so it's a pretty average lens. You can get a lot done with it. Uh, right here is the flash sync port, and so if you have a flash mounted up here that doesn't work with a hot shoe, which is powered by the camera, you plug that cable into right there, and so when you fire the shutter, it goes off at the exact same time. Up here, so you might look at this and go, oh my goodness, what are all those different switches and ports and all of that. Right here is just the switch to turn it on. Lots of different cameras have different places that you turn it on. Some turn on when you move this lever, some have switches on the back, and this one just has it right here. This is the film wind lever, and so when you open the back, you open this right here and lift up and that opens the film door and inside you can see this is the shutter curtain you place your film right here and pull it across into there and this is a speed loader so usually there's little slots in this mechanism right here and you stick the end of the film leader inside of there and wind it a few times to make sure that it's seated properly and these little nubs right here work with on the top and bottom of the film you might have seen before little holes and um, these work with those little nubs and that actually is what pulls the film along and so we'll do a demonstration of how to put film in and load it later but that's just a quick little overview of the door and once you are done shooting your film if it's 24 or 36 exposure film that is said right here so as you wind, it advances that, and you'll be able to see the numbers go along. And once you're finished, then you, this is down, and you will press a little button on the bottom here, and that releases this mechanism over here so that you can take this and wind it back, and that will wind all of your film back safely into the canister so that you can open this and take your film out without exposing it to light. Right here is your shutter speed dial, and that is where this camera, it's pretty typical, it goes from bulb so that you can have this pressed down for as long as you'd like, and that and the shutter stays open the whole time, and I'll do a demonstration of that, all the way up from one to one thousand, one one thousandth of a second. And this right here, you lift this up, and you change that. And so film cameras are a little bit different from digital cameras in the way that digital cameras you can change your ISO, which is how sensitive that sensor on the inside is to light. And so the higher the sensor, the more kind of noise you get, but the better performance you get in dark situations. That's kind of the same thing with film. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is to light, so fat, you can get faster shutter speeds with and that helps with motion blur and so you're not shaking around as much and here's the front of the camera and we're gonna remove the lens this is a breech clock mount only used by Canon for a little bit usually it's what's a bayonet mount and so you just press a little button and turn it but this one you rotate this collar and then that loosens the lens and you can take it off there we go and so I'm gonna set the lens down in here and here you see the mirror and so an SLR this is an SLR camera stands for single lens reflex. And so you look through the viewfinder in the back and on some digital cameras nowadays, uh, mirrorless cameras, this is actually a digital representation of what you're seeing through the lens, it's actually a screen. But on this one, the light comes in through the lens, it bounces off that mirror up and right here is a prism. And so that light is reflected back through this way and so that you can see you're actually looking right through the lens through this viewfinder. And so when you cock the shutter, it moves the curtain in the back. And then when you take an exposure, you see that mirror flips up really quickly. 
and so when you're looking through the viewfinder it goes black for a second and so when you're actually taking photos after each photo or I guess before each photo you have to cock this lever right here and that does a few things that moves the film along so that you can expose a new section of it and it moves that shutter curtain over so that it's primed and ready to go for when you press this button the shutter release that mirror goes up blocks the viewfinder for a second and allows light to come through the camera and when that shutter opens it can expose the film for a set amount of time so that mirror movement is just so light can come through and hit the film on the front here you have a self timer uh, so how it works is it's not like a little button it doesn't beep you actually pull it all the way down here it gets ready to go you ready a new exposure and when you press the shutter button you hear that mechanical timer going inside that lever goes up and when it gets to the top there you go so you see that mirror move up and the shutter move as well in the back and that's how you know you've gotten a good exposure and so now for the lens so this is again a 50 millimeter prime lens so it doesn't have any zoom functions so that means that this in the front actually focuses the lens. In digital cameras now and in some newer film cameras, the lens is autofocus when you half press the shutter button. But on these lenses, every picture that you take, you have to manually focus it. This ring right here is your aperture ring. <clears throat> so a 1.8 aperture is pretty wide. So almost this whole area in the front will let light through. However, when you stop this down, to lower apertures like f16 you can't see it right now because it's not in the camera we'll demonstrate that later but little aperture blades actually close and make it so less light can get through that has a few effects I'm sure we've talked about that before in photography but a higher aperture number smaller hole means that more of the frame will be in focus and a lower f-stop number but a larger aperture means that your plane of focus will be a lot less so you can get that isolation that like iPhones mimic nowadays with their portrait mode so the, the subject will be in focus but the background will be blurred and so I'm going to put the lens back onto the camera now and kind of open up the back and go through some exposures so you can see what that looks like okay I'm going to open up the back again by pulling this up that releases the door and then you can open it up and see that speed loader mechanism moving out of the way put that back down and that locks the film in there so you can see that little middle bit right there actually goes inside and that keeps the film kind of in place and so I'm gonna cock the shutter and you'll see that both the mechanism on the right and the shutter curtain moves to the right and that pulls the film forward advances to the next frame and gets that curtain ready to fire so this is gonna be a 1 1,000th of a second exposure and you might be able to see that curtain moving it's very quick, so I don't think you could. But I'm going to move it to a slower shutter speed now, like 1 15th of a second, or actually 1 8th of a second. And you should be able to see that a lot better. And then I'm going to do a bulb so we can actually look through the lens a little bit and see what's going on. So you can see that curtain open, and that would be a 1 8th for 1 8th of a second. That film would be exposed to all of the light coming through the lens and you'd have your picture recorded on that section of film. All right, so now I've rotated the shutter speed dial on the top to bulb mode, and that means that as long as I have this shutter button pushed down, that curtain will stay open and the film will be exposed for as long as I want it to. And this is particularly useful when you're doing things like photography at really late at night when there's not a lot of light out, or you can kind of get those effects where you might maybe see like a river or a waterfall that looks super smooth and glassy. You do this with ND filters in the front, which is a neutral density filter, and that actually blocks out some of the light so that you can have a longer shutter speed with a good amount of light getting in a proper amount of light. So we're on bulb mode right now. I'm gonna cock the shutter again, and then I will press the shutter button and you should be able to see through the lens. So you couldn't see it before when I was holding the lens that those apertures, those aperture blades will actually close. And I have an F16 right now, which is the highest this lens goes. 
And so I'm gonna open it. All right. And so you can see in there how those aperture blades have closed and the hole, the opening in the lens is pretty small. All right. And so yeah, you can see that a little bit better. And that shutter curtain is open. And so this whole time the film is being exposed and uh, if you're at night taking a picture of lights or cars going by, you'll be able to see that. And as soon as I let go, that shutter curtain closes and your exposure is finished. So this is um, Ilford Delta film. It's a black and white 100 speed film, which means that it's fairly low speed. You would need a lot of light or longer exposures to expose it properly, but it will give you really nice, very low grain and a very professional studio looking black and white photo. So we open it just like that. We have a little canister. Um, and inside the canister is a roll of film. Looks like this. And this tail is okay to have out in the light because this will be wound onto the... This tail is okay to have in the light. It will be wound onto the spool, out of the way. It's fine. So we open the camera as demonstrated. And you're going to want to actually leave this up so that we can load the film in there. You're going to pop this in like that press this down that will lock the film in place so to load the film you'll grab this leader the tail end of the film run it across here and in this mechanism you're going to kind of want to keep some pressure on it so that it doesn't move up but it stays there there's a little diagram over here on the door demonstrating that um, so you'll now close that that little metal piece will grab the film you'll shut the door and it's all set it's locked in so here, you will wind through a couple exposures because that was those two exposures will be the part of film that was exposed when we were winding across. No images would show up there anyway. Do it a couple times, and then you're on number zero up here on this little thing window. And then here you have it loaded and we are ready to take some photos. Okay, so now we're looking through the back of the viewfinder and we can see that on the right at the bottom there's this little circle and it kind of up halfway is a needle. And so that circle kind of lets us know where we're exposed for right now given the current shutter speed and aperture. So that circle is kind of controlled by the aperture ring and that needle is controlled more by the shutter speed and that circle needs to be lined up with that needle in order for the picture to be exposed properly so for that current shutter speed and this lighting condition that needle is right about in the middle so that means that right now this picture is going to be way overexposed for the aperture that I have it set at. So what I need to do is decrease the aperture by increasing the aperture number until that needle is right about in the middle of that circle. Then now when I take this picture, <clears throat> the photo will be exposed correctly, but we're out of focus. So this lens and this camera are not autofocus because it's an older film camera. So what we need to do is use the lens to focus, and I can do that by turning the end barrel of the lens and slowly you see that picture come into focus and so when you're taking film pictures on these older cameras you can't just go snap it around every single picture you have to pause expose correctly changing your aperture and shutter speed and focus so now we're ready to take the picture it's exposed properly and I can press the shutter button. I've already cocked the shutter, so now that you can see on the right we're exposed properly and we're also in focus, I can depress the button and we've taken a picture. Now you can see the screen went black for a second and that's because of that, mi uh, that mirror coming up and blocking the prism for just a second so that film can be exposed. All right, so that was a little overview of film cameras and kind of a little bit about film photography. Thanks for watching.